Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, and moving on to the next question, we have an example to do. So, if functions f and g are continuous functions for xer, f of 3 is equal to 5, and the limit as x approaches 3, in brackets of f of x times g of x minus 3 times g of x all squared is equal to 16, we have to find g of 3. Now, this is a pretty cool question and it's going to combine properties of limits and the definition of continuity. So if you didn't watch videos on those two subjects before in the course, highly recommend you watch those before watching this example. And just looking at the example, you may be tempted to just plug in five, for example, for this f of x, and then maybe just solve for g of x, because it'll be the only variable remaining in this equation here. However, you wouldn't get full marks for that. You have to actually go through the work and there's going to be a lot of properties, properties of limits and that continuity property that you're going to have to bring up in order to get the full marks for this type of question. So let's start off with writing this entire limit over here. So we got the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times g of x minus 3 uh, times g of x, and this is all going to be squared, and this is all going to equal 16. And so what I'm going to do now is notice that we have the limit as x approaches 3 of this function here in brackets, we could pretend that's one function squared. And what I'm gonna do is use properties of limits to try to get to the point where we are, where this expression is going to be in terms of these expressions. Limit as x approaches three of f of x, and then limit as x approaches three of g of x. And then we can get into dealing with f of three equaling five, and then finding g of three. And I'm going to turn this expression on the left side to an expression in terms of these using properties of limits. So the first property is the exponential property, which would be like taking this limit as x approaches 3 and distributing it into this big bracket here. So it's like, let's put a square bracket limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times g of x minus 3 times g of x and that's all going to be squared, and that's going to equal 16. Right From here to here, I used a property. And again, if you're not too familiar with properties of limits, then highly recommend you go back to the videos, watch a few examples, because I go over questions like this using the properties of limits, but in more detail, and I actually show you which law to use, etc., etc. So from here to here, we use one property and now notice that we got the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times g of x minus 3 times g of x. So notice that we're taking one function, subtracting another. And so we could distribute that limit to both of these expressions. So in large brackets, we'd have the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times g of x minus the limit as x approaches 3 of 3 times g of x. And this is still going to be all in brackets. That's going to be squared. And that's going to equal 16 on the right side. And then from here, notice that we are multiplying two functions. So we could distribute that limit sign to both of those functions and multiply them. And then over here, notice we have a constant times a function. So we could take the constant out. So the next line is going to be the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x times the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x minus, we're going to take the 3 out, and then the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. This is going to be all squared, and that's going to equal 16. Now, why do we want to get 
this to be in terms of this expression here, in terms of the limit as x approaches 3 and the limit as x approaches or uh, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x and the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. Well, notice that we're given f of 3 is equal to 5. And we're told that f and g are continuous functions for all x values, for x e r. Which means that f and g are continuous at an x value of 3 as well. If they're continuous for x e r, then that means f and g are continuous at x is equal to 3. And if a function is continuous at a specific x value, what does that mean? That means that the limit as x approaches to 3 of, let's say, f of x is equal to what? f of 3. And the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is equal to g of 3. Right? So one more time. So if f and g are continuous functions for x e r, then f and g are also continuous at x is equal to 3, at the x value of 3. And therefore, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is equal to f of 3. Since this continuous at this x value 3, then this holds. And that's, the, uh, that's from the definition of continuity. This holds and this holds as well. And so now what we can do is instead of writing the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, because that is equal to f of 3, we can instead just sub in f of 3 here. And instead of writing the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x, since we know that that's equal to g of 3, we could sub in g of 3 here and g of 3 there. And then notice this f of 3 is going to be 5, and then g of 3 is going to be the only variable remaining in this equation. Okay, so it's a little complex, but if you follow the process that I did, it makes sense. So first what I did was I took as a review. So we took this equation that we were given. On the left side, we worked with the properties of limits. So we can take this and make it in terms of these two expressions, limit as x approaches 3 of f of x and then the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. So we went from here to here using a bunch of properties of limits. And then what we did was we used the continuity definition. Since f and g were continuous for x e r, f and g are continuous at x is equal to 3, which means that these two expressions here are equal to these two expressions from the definition of continuity that we've gone over in previous videos as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sub in these two expressions for wherever I see these two expressions on this left side of the equation. So if I continue this uh, up here, what am I going to have? In square brackets, instead of writing the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, I'm going to have f of 3 times g of 3 minus 3 times g of 3. Right? I'm subbing in g of 3 here. And then this is going to be all squared and it's going to equal 16. <clears throat> and f of 3 is what? We're told it's 5. So we can now directly sub in 5 over here. And if we tried to sub in 5 over here, we would have sort of missed a step. We may not get full marks for that. I guess it depends on your prof. But notice that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, that's not the same as f of 3. We have to state that it's the same using that definition of continuity like I did before. But since we stated that before, now we could plug in this uh, f of 3 for that expression. And so now what we could do, we're given that f of 3 is equal to 5. We could just plug in 5 right there. So this would be 5g of 3 minus 3g of 3 squared is equal to 16. 
And now g of 3 is just its own variable. We could sub in something actually if you want. Let's say we let, uh, let's say capital M is equal to g of 3. And then we'll bring back the g of 3. So we'll have what? 5m minus 3m squared equals 16. Um, so here we'll end up having 2m or uh, sorry, there shouldn't be two equal signs, my bad. There should just be this one equal sign in the middle. Wow, I put these equal signs over here. That's incorrect format. There should always only be one equal sign in an equation. Sorry about that. So anyway, back to this. m is equal to g of 3. Um, so we got 5m minus 3m, which is 2m. Those are like terms. Squared is equal to 16. And so what that means is 2m is going to equal the square root of 16. And the square root of 16, notice that there are two answers for that. It's plus or minus 4. And so if we continue this up here, what that means is 2m can either be negative 4 or 2m can be positive 4. What we could do is isolate for that m now, divide both sides by 2, so m here would be negative 2, and m here would be positive 2. And we're now solving for m. Remember, we let m equal g of 3, so we can bring back that g of 3 now. So basically, g of 3 can either equal negative 2, or g of 3 can equal uh, positive 2. And so those are your two answers. So there's two answers here. There was no restriction saying that it has to be a positive value or anything like that. So either or works out. G of 3 can either be negative 2 or G of 3 can be positive 2. So when you get a question like this, you got to work with the properties of limits first. Get it in terms of these expressions and then use that definition of continuity to sub in f of 3 and g of 3, f of 3, g of 3, g of 3. And then f of 3 we're given, subbed in that 5, and then we can just solve for g of 3 and then in this case it was negative 2 and positive 2.